you guys have relied so much this season on Kawhi in the fourth quarter. What did it mean for you to do this essentially where he wasn't going on a, one of those scoring runs late? Well, they weren't going to let him. They were going to trap him all game, which they made that clear. Um, I don't think we we won with any offense anyway tonight. You know, we put four bigs on the floor basically and defended them. Um, you know, what did they have? Ten points, I think, in the fourth quarter. You can hold the team. This was one of those defensive wins, you know, which we talked about. So. That was really good. I tell you, we have, I don't think we've ever had that lineup on the floor. Um, and to have that much size on the floor created a problem. We got us some offensive rebounds and, and it, it created, they were getting one shot and out. So, um, but it's good, you know, you're not going to play well every night. Yet he almost had a triple double still, you know, almost a quadruple double, you know. <laughs> um, but it was, it, was, it was a team win. It was really nice. I thought Jermichael, you know, it's funny. Guys get so wrapped up sometimes in missed open shots, right? Um, and tonight, instead of getting wrapped up in that, he just kept playing defense and kept making plays. Uh, and that's how, you know, we ask every guy, if you can take away the best thing you do, how else can you help the team? And I thought a lot of guys did that tonight. Doc, uh, you guys are now 10 games into the season. You're 7-3. and three. How would you assess this first portion of the season? Uh, survival, you know, really. We, we've... Um, I don't know if we've had the toughest schedule, but we got to be up there in the top five somewhere. Is that right? So um, we've had games with Kawhi out. You know, we've had, um, you know, we haven't had Paul George yet. Um, you know, we knew before the season started that these 10 games would be hard. Um, and I didn't know where we would be, honestly. I, I really didn't. And to be where we're at, we don't have our team yet. And to be where we're at, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Doc, were you surprised that Toronto uh, scrappy enough to come in in a back-to-back -back and give you a game like this? That's who they are. That's their that's their DNA. So no, uh, they they play that way every night. Uh, last night they they scrapped the win, and tonight they were trying to do it again. You know, um, it was one of those games for sure. Hey Doc, even with the uh, the shooting line that Kawhi had and the turnovers, how do you see him navigate all different kinds of roles with his playmaking and defense to still be effective? Pretty good, you know. Um, I actually thought, you know, with all, I mean, they double teamed him no matter where he was at on the floor. Uh, I I thought we ended up getting great shots and not making them, and then I thought for a while we had a stretch where nobody trusted it anymore. We were trying to attack through double teams and. Uh, but then the fourth, we kind of gathered ourselves back and started moving the ball again. So, um, you know, the more players you can put on the floor uh, for him, the less they can do that. Um, you know, so we'll see. Doc, it, was, it seemed like that they came out on fire on offense and everything. It, it seemed super aggressive. But then in the, in the fourth quarter, the defense did step up, and it seemed like you guys had more stops, more blocks, more yeah. steals. Was, do you accredit that to your defense, or do you, was it just like my, um, I think Mr. Medina said, the the second half of the back to back they got a little gassed out? Probably a little bit of both. I, I definitely thought our size defensively uh, was a major factor. You know, they're usually the longest team, right? And tonight they they felt the team that was longer. You know, uh, and so it was one of those nights. But clearly playing back to back, though there was no travel involved. Uh, you know, uh, is very difficult. You know, that's why we keep trying to cut them out. You know, I mean, it's very hard on coaches. Uh, Doc, <laughs> <laughs> Doc, uh, how much will uh, having Paul back at some point help Kawhi in situations like he was in tonight in fourth yeah, quarter? Yeah, just imagine when you have Kawhi and Lou uh, and, and Paul and the team tries to trap you with Trez. I mean, you're going to pretty much get what you want. But until we have that, uh, you know, it wasn't a bad move by them. Uh, Doc, you just spoke about how you guys had a uh, tough uh, three-point shooting. You guys were eight for 36. Were you yeah. still telling the guys to shoot from the three-point? Yeah, point? I was yelling at them, too. Uh, I thought we passed five of them up, you know. We kept driving in the middle with a bunch of trees, you know. I mean, shoot it. You know, if, if that's what you do, shoot it. And I thought we passed – I bet we passed ten of them up, to be honest, and, and probably got nothing out of the drive, so – uh, you know, my thing is if, you, if that's what you do and you're open, you should never hesitate, ever. You know, let it go. I haven't even looked at Houston yet, you know. Um, so 
and I, they have this one guy I know that's pretty good, <laughs> and then they have another guy uh, that's pretty good. So I'll hey, Doc. call Austin and see how we should guard him. Hey, Doc, uh, <laughs> how's Landry doing? How serious do you think that uh, I don't know how serious it is, but it's a ankle sprain, a lower leg injury ankle sprain. So, um, you know, that's about all I know right now. Yeah, hey, uh, Doc, obviously before the game from the outside, there was a lot of attention on the storyline of Kawhi playing Toronto. Uh, you mentioned before you never notice a change in his demeanor. During the game, does he give you any kind of idea that, that maybe he's sensing the emotions of that moment? And how does that compare to other guys you've coached in the past? Well, if you compare him to Kevin Garnett, it's just a little bit of a difference. You know, you can kind of read Kevin pretty well. No, he doesn't give much. I like that. I like the poker. Him and Sham are very, when you watch both of them, you don't know, they're just into the game. So, uh, you know, I think we communicate a lot during the game, but not about his emotions. I don't, I honestly don't worry about him a lot. I, I love how he does that. Um, you know, clearly, I don't know a lot of people on earth that can do that uh, emotionally. I could never do that. Um, you know, it's impressive that he can play under double teams, under big games, under whatever the situation is, and just he keeps himself into the game somehow. Um, it's impressive. Uh, Doc, usually to start the season, you start Kawhi, you take him out with about four and a half minutes or five minutes to go, and then he doesn't come back till the second quarter. Today you guys brought him back with about two and a half minutes left in the first. Was there a particular reason for that? No, we've done it a lot, actually. You know, we've, we've played him in three shifts in the first half, uh, and we tried to do three in the second. The uh, only reason we did it in the second half is because that one group had it going for a while, so we left, let him rest. You know, right now you're looking at the – score and time in the second half. If we're playing well, I can sit them longer. Uh, you know, it's still a, a work in progress. As the season goes on, his minutes will go up, and then it's easier. You know, right now you want to keep him in the area that, that we've kept him. Uh, it's a little tougher. Um, Coach, can you speak to what uh, Mo Harkless gave you guys in that, awesome. in that uh, fourth it quarter? It was, it was an awesome all game. I mean, uh, it's amazing. I, I think he's guarded every position. Like, he guarded the point guard for the most part the entire second half. Uh, in, in, in Van Fleet and did a hell of a job, you know. Um, I'm still learning these guys. Like, I don't know literally who can guard who yet, you know. Um, I do know who can't guard who, uh, but we're not sure, like, which guys. Like, Mo keeps surprising you. We haven't put him on a lot of point guards, and now we know, you know, and he told us the other day he, he actually preferred guarding smaller guys, you know, with his length, and he showed why. Hey, Coach, last game, Pat Beverly said this team just seems to have, like, a, a certain type of will in the fourth quarter that other teams don't have. Can yeah, you touch upon that? I like that talk, you know. <laughs> um, but it, we have shown that. That's a good trait, obviously, to have when you don't have your great game going and somehow you can dig down and win the game. Um, I would prefer us to have that trait in the first, second, and third, and fourth. You know, maybe we wouldn't have ourselves in these binds. But um, – we we got a lot, like we got a lot to figure out still. You can see it in how we're playing, uh, but while we're doing it, we're still winning games. You know. You guys had a uh, twenty offensive rebounds tonight. Out uh, rebounded the Raptors by almost thirty. Yeah. Was there a concerted effort tonight on the glass, or just it's how the been game every played? Every night so far, um, we feel like we have a size advantage. Um, you knew uh, going by watching their other games that every at some point in every game they go small and when they went small we actually went bigger you know we just felt like uh we well, can't make a shot so let's see if we can get our misses you, you know and um, you know that's how the game turned out for us i wanted to bring up zubak and how you felt about his performance tonight um you know first stint didn't love it after that he played terrific you know um He's just getting better, but he's been great all year. He, he really has. I'm so proud of him. Um, you know, you, you really are. You ask a player, a young player, I think we forget how young he is to do certain things over the summer, come back uh, with a different mindset, of, of and, and, and he did it. I mean, that's – it's really cool for me as a coach to see what he's doing. How would you attribute Kawhi Leonard? He seems like a quiet leader. He doesn't say much, but it just – is that, is that the way you'd look at it? That's who he is, you know. Yeah. Um, you know. You don't have to talk to lead, you know. 
You really don't. You can just do, and everybody follows. You know, but he does talk. He talks to his teammates, you know, and he'll – once his press conference is over, he's going to talk to you guys in about an hour and a half. <laughs> that's early. I know that's – sorry, that's a sore joke for you guys. I'll be eating by the time this <laughs> – go ahead. Can you talk about uh, Trez's leadership as far as, like, him just communicating more with guys on the floor? He's been great. You know, we, we get to we, – we talk to him and Zub the most because there's no good defensive team if their bigs aren't talkers. Um, and neither one of them are really talkers by nature. And, and Zub today, you could hear him on the floor. Trez, whenever he takes his mouthpiece out, you can understand him, uh, you know. So, uh, but he's talking. It's been great, you know. Mo is a quiet guy by nature. We're trying to get him to talk and Jamaico, But you could slowly hear them. Um, and once they start doing that, then we're going to be really good defensively. Uh, Patrick Patterson was one of the first starters, if not the first in double digits offensively. Has anything in his role shifted from the time that signing was made, or do you see his role shifting any further once Paul George is added into this lineup? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we told him to shoot the ball. Uh, we, we really do. Like, sometimes if you simplify it for players, they become better. Um, and that's what him, I, you know, we told this story, but he was working on dribbling, and we just said shoot or pass. You know, just shoot every time if you're open. And I think that's what he's doing. And I, you know, it makes him a better shooter because I think that's what he is. Uh, and sometimes we get away from what we really are, and that's what he is, and that's what we, we need him to be. Uh, Coach, over here, uh, can you talk about Patrick Beverly in terms of rebounding? I think this is the second um, game in the past week that he's had double-digit rebounds. Is it an effort? I'm sorry, is it a concerted effort for you guys to send him down there, or is it just a matter of him, you know, kind of no, doing what he, he does? usually breaks the rules when he's down there. Uh, honestly, he's just a great rebounder. He is. He's a great rebounder at the point guard spot. Um, and we do give him liberties because he is. You know, uh, certain guys like Rondo, we had one, and our rule was the guard to get back. But then he rebounded so well, we just changed it and said, well, you can do whatever you want, but get back too. And Pat comes up with big ones. He's just tough, man. I say it every press conference. He's from Chicago. <laughs> Doc, it's a, it's a couple of games now where the three-point shooting just hasn't hasn't really been there. Obviously, yeah. you guys are still missing Paul, but um, are, are you concerned? Are you, at one point, do you get concerned with the three-point shooting at all? Never. Never. No, we didn't keep jacking them up there. You know, they'll go in. Everybody good? <laughs>